Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel and your first steps into the contact sampler. In the last video, we took a look at how to loop the audio files indefinitely so you had long sustained sounds. And so far throughout this chapter, we've been building our first sample instrument in contact. While we still have chapter three's scripting tutorials ahead of us, this is the last video for chapter two, where we're gonna complete building our first instrument. That means in this video, we're gonna find out about effects and how they're used at the various layers within contact. So with that, let's kick it off. Okay, so before we take a look at effects, let's just recap the signal flow within contact because it is a little bit tricky to wrap your head around. If you've been following along with chapter two, you know that there are zones which contain the samples and those zones can be stretched out over different notes or different velocity ranges. Those zones are then collected up into different groups and you can have several groups that are then collected up into an instrument. At that point, you know that there are different levels to the instrument. So you've got your zone level, your sample level, but you've also got your group level and then your instrument level. Understanding those levels are really important, obviously for building your library, but also when it comes to effects, understanding the signal flow as well is very important. All of the groups have their own output, their volume output. And we've shown that in the last few videos, we've seen that there are different volumes that we can control for each group, different pans, different sort of settings. But where do those volume groups output? They don't all just mix together straight away into a group. Let's take a look at the signal flow within contact. So here are our three groups. So we've got our plucks here. If I click over here, we've got our bells and we have these pads that we just added in. Now, each one of these has a volume on their own group, but we can output to a different spot. And this is where buses come in and sends and instrument level effects and all that jazz starts to come in. So if it's set to default, it's just gonna go straight to the instrument output, nothing to worry about but I can actually divide them out into different buses and then treat those buses with specific effects. So if I change my output here to bus one and open up instrument buses, now let's play this group through bus one. You can see there bus one is coming up with a sound. Let's take our bells and change that to bus two. Now that we play them, we can see them coming up on two. If I take group solo off, we should have the plucks and pads coming through on one and bells coming through on two. We should see both one and two loading up here. Now this could be really useful if I wanted to put say a delay on just the bells and not on everything else. Or if I wanted to create a low pass filter on the pad sounds, but not affect the plucks and bells. These sorts of options are available to us if we separate them out by buses. Having said that though, there are group effects. So if we wanted to do something specifically to a group, we might be better to use the group effects. But if we wanna take two groups, let's say the bells and the plucks and run them through the same effect, then we could output them to the same bus and use bus effects. And this is really useful. Now, once you've got your buses all together, they all mix down into the instrument. And that's when they arrive at the instrument effects. So the instrument effects are below here now in the insert effects section. And that means the buses are flowing through directly into here. Now at this point, right at the end here is a sends option. And that sends part of the signal onto the effects down here. Effectively, what sends are, are they just like sends or buses or auxiliary tracks in any of the doors that you've been using? The main signal from the instrument still goes directly to the output, but it copies out some of the signal and sends it to the sends channel. The sends then might process it and blend that back in with the dry signal. So if you're doing something like reverb, you might wanna send that onto a sends channel and then blend that back in. Let's take a look at effects at each of these levels. So I'm gonna put the group solo back on and I'm gonna take this bell sound. They're quite bright. Let's put a low pass filter here. So I'm gonna jump into this group effects here and I'm gonna click on it to add something new under filters. Let's go low pass and we'll just do a ladder LP4. So this is something similar to a vintage Moog synth. At this point, if I play it with group solo on, absolutely no sound at the moment. <laughs> the reason for that is the cutoff is so low, it's not producing any sound. So let's open that back up and let's play again. So you can hear that it's rolling off some of those harsher frequencies and we can use this to maybe shape it a little bit. If I increase that a little bit more, maybe up to here, 
got some of the bright sound, but we're not all that really high top end detail. Now in group effects, a lot of the time you can modify stuff within there. So if you remember from the last video, you can use the mod section here to open up and add a modulator to something. Let's say for instance, external source velocity could be added to the cutoff. So the harder I hit the note, the more the cutoff filter will open up, the softer, the shorter it will close. So if I bring this cutoff down to the lowest point that I'd like it to cut off to, and then the harder I hit it, the more this will open up. That's actually a kind of a quick hack in order to build a bit of expressiveness into it. If you remember back from the modulator video, you'll know that I use velocity to change the volume and that could give a kind of faux sound of something a little bit more expressive or as if I sampled lots of velocity layers. But if you combine this with a low pass filter so it makes it get darker as you hit it softer and brighter as you hit it louder, that's getting a lot more lifelike. So you can combine modulators with effects and be really, really cool with that. All right, so we'll probably leave that where it is now. That's something quite nice. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn off group solo. Let's hear this all together. So you can hear when I'm hitting it harder now, the bell tones are poking out, but when I'm hitting it softer, they're not poking out so much. Quite nice with that low pass filter there. Let's jump down here into instrument effects. So this is gonna be something happening to all of the groups. Let's add in here, let's say maybe some saturation. I've got some different modes I can pick from. I might choose the enhanced and let's push the saturation a little bit. The volume is quite loud now, so I'm gonna pull that back and let's have a listen. It's getting a bit crunchy, which is quite nice. Let's push it some more so you can really hear the effect. Now it's got really crunchy, really saturated. So that could be something really cool to add to your library if you're looking for that sort of vibe. At any time, if I want to, I can bypass this. Just this little B here will bypass. Otherwise this button down here that's just lit up, I can turn that on and off. So if I wanna hear what it's like before and after, I can toggle that on and off, nice and easy. Now, if I come down to the ascend effects, I'm gonna add in here a reverb. So let's add reverb in here. Now let's play something. Huge, glorious sound that is now being applied with reverb. Often I, I add reverb just as default now because you always want some kind of little splashiness to it. The biggest thing here is that you've got a return volume. You're balancing the dry signal to the return volume. So it's not an output. Over here with the saturator, if I turned the output all the way down, you would get no volume. It's not a blend. It's not blending saturation into the original signal. That's the overall output. Sends differs from that though with the return. So if I turn the return all the way down, all we're gonna hear is the dry sound. But as I bring that back up, Very splashy, very cool. So that's a little bit of the difference between the sends and the instrument there. You've got a little bit more control over the concept of blending between dry and wet, as opposed to just balancing the volume overall. There are loads of great effects in contact, and I recommend adding the effects to this part rather than processing with effects. There's a reason for that. That might be hard to hear. If you're anything like me, you've got amazing guitar pedals or effects that, you, you know, hardware units that you wanna use. And by all means, sample with those if you want to. But here's the thing, when you're sampling one note at a time in reverb, it's gonna give you the whole, whole sound of that one note. But then if you sample that note and play it back 10 times on 10 different notes, you're gonna get 10 times the amount of reverb and not very much control over it. However, if you sample the notes and then add a reverb plugin at the end, instead of it sounding like this huge muddy mess of reverb, you're going to get a much cleaner reverb sound. So it's worth experimenting, trying the different sounds. You might need to blend between one or the other. It doesn't mean don't sample with effects, but just consider what it's gonna sound like at the end. Are you using reverb to help glue it together and give it a sense of space? If so, maybe use the contact reverb to do that. Are you using it to change and manipulate and create something interesting that becomes part of the sound design itself? Maybe use your hardware stuff for that. You wanna do that right at the beginning. So there we go, there's some effects within contact. So there we have it. Now we can add effects to any part of our library at any level to dramatically change the sound or just subtly add a little bit of vibe. In doing so, that now concludes chapter two, where we've gone through the process of building your whole 
first library. I would love to hear in the comments if you've been following along and building your own library to hear what it is that you've been creating. It would be wonderful to know what you're getting out of this. While this is the final video in chapter two, there is one more chapter left and that is chapter three where we're going to dive into scripting in contact and build our very first GUI. This is going to be a fantastic chapter where we take a look at the most important scripting elements and how to build basic performance controls into your library. You'll be able to add your own background, all of your own controls, and then be able to share that with others so that they can use it too. So as always, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell so you get notified when that video drops. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey for chapter two, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, I'll catch you later.